after understanding these concepts now we come to what is the first come first serve scheduling policy and how does it work now first come first serve scheduling policy is a non preemptive scheduling algorithm which means that the cpu cannot be taken away in between the execution once the cpu is given to a particular job the job will keep the cpu and release the cpu only after its execution is complete so that is the basic policy behind first come first serve and in the first come first serve scheduling policy the jobs are put on the cpu based on their arrival time that means the name itself suggests first come first serve or first in first out that means as and when the jobs come into the system they will get a priority of getting the cpu the job which comes first is at the beginning of the queue of the ready queue and will get the cpu first the job which comes later on will be coming at the back of the queue and will be getting the cpu later on so the example over here which we can talk about is so i have been giving you the example of watching a movie so let us consider the same examples if i want to buy the ticket for that movie i have to go to the counter now we must have seen that whenever we go to a counter to buy tickets there's a long queue and we are entertained over there on the basis of when we come to and join the queue the person who is standing at the front of the queue near the counter will be serviced first and the person who is at the back of the queue will be getting the ticket after the entire queue is serviced so that is the best example of a first in first out or a fcfs policy now coming to a computer system to explain the first come first serve scheduling policy we'll consider an example over here suppose if now you can see the screen over here suppose if we are considering that there are five jobs which are coming to the system p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 we have their burst time or the cpu time which is given here in milliseconds p1 needs it requires 12 milliseconds to complete its execution p2 needs 4 p3 7 p4 8 and p5 3 milliseconds This is the arrival time of all the jobs. So P1 it comes at the zero eight millisecond. It needs twelve milliseconds to complete its execution. P2 comes at the first millisecond. It needs four milliseconds to complete its execution, and so on. So this is the entire situation wherein we have the list of programs, the required time, and their arrival time. Now we'll see how the first come first serve policy is judged basically on. the average waiting time and the average turnaround time so first of all we'll find out the average waiting time and for this we need to make a timeline which will show the execution of the process now to prepare a timeline we will consider all the jobs one by one because this is a first come first serve policy so we have to consider it on the basis of their arrival time now if i show you the screen over here from this it's very clear that at the 08th millisecond p1 has arrived on the system the remaining jobs they come only after the first millisecond so at the 08th millisecond only p1 is there on the system as we can see over here at the 08th millisecond there's only one job and because it's a first come first serve policy this p1 gets the cpu so at the 08th millisecond p1 gets the cpu we'll be constructing the timeline over here so at the 08 millisecond p1 has the cpu and it needs the cpu for 12 milliseconds right now i'm showing it in red over here all the jobs which are come which are there on the cpu will be shown in red so p1 is currently on the cpu getting executed it requires 12 milliseconds so at it will keep the cpu for 12 millisecond as it is it is a non preemptive scheduling policy so the cpu cannot be taken away if p1 needs it for 12 milliseconds it will keep it for 12 milliseconds after the 12th millisecond p1 will finish its execution and will be out of the system see p1 is out of the system over here and because p1 completes its execution by the 12th millisecond by that time all the remaining four jobs have already arrived in the system so we have all the four jobs over here and they will be served on the basis of their arrival time so the next job which arrives is p2 so p2 continues the execution on the cpu till the 16th millisecond and after the 16th millisecond it is out of the system and 
now p3 gets the cpu at the 16th milliseconds because p3 is the next in the queue so p3 gets the cpu at the 16th millisecond now it needs the cpu for 7 milliseconds so it keeps it till the 23rd milliseconds as getting on 16 and requiring it for 7 milliseconds makes it 16 plus 7 23 so p3 keeps it till the 23rd millisecond and after the 23rd millisecond, it is out of the system. Next in the queue is P4. So at the 23rd millisecond, P4 gets the CPU. It needs it for 8 milliseconds. So keeps the CPU till the 31st millisecond as 23 plus 8 is 31. So till the 31st millisecond, P4 keeps the CPU and after that, it is out of the system. Next is P5 which gets the CPU at the 31st millisecond. It wants the CPU for 3 milliseconds so keeps it till the 34th millisecond as 31 plus 3 is 34. So after the 34th millisecond P5 also is out of the system and all the jobs have finished their execution. Now over here this is the timeline for all the jobs. For all the five jobs starting at zero and completing at 34, we notice that if I consider individual jobs, P1 gets the CPU at the time zero. It leaves the CPU at tw time 12 milliseconds. The next job P2 gets it at 12 milliseconds and leaves it at 16 milliseconds. P3 gets it at 16, leaves at 23. P4 gets it at 23, leaves at 31 and P5 gets the CPU at 31 and leaves the CPU at 34 milliseconds. Now we will see how do we calculate the average waiting time first. The average waiting time is the waiting time of P1 plus waiting time of P2 plus P3, P4, P5 divided by the total number of jobs. That is the average waiting time. Now we'll see how do we calculate this. Average waiting time is basically if I say waiting time of P1. Now what is waiting time of P1? That is the time P1 waits for the CPU. Now P1 arrives at 0, 0 at millisecond and it gets the CPU at 0 milliseconds. So the waiting time of P1 as such is 0. Right? Now if I consider the waiting time of P2 according to the timeline, now, if I consider P2, P2 gets the CPU at 12 milliseconds, but it arrived at the system at the first millisecond. So, if I just talk about P2 arriving at the first millisecond and getting the CPU at 12 milliseconds, that is, it waited for 11 milliseconds for the CPU. So, that is how we calculate the waiting time. So, the waiting time of P1 is when it gets the CPU minus the arrival time that is 0, it gets the CPU at 0 minus the arrival time that is 0. So the next one now, the waiting time of P2. Now P2 gets the CPU at 12 milliseconds. According to the timeline, it gets the CPU at the 12th millisecond and its arrival time is 1. So the waiting time of P2 becomes 12 minus 1. Now coming to the waiting time of P3. P3 gets the CPU at the 16th millisecond and it arrives at the 3rd millisecond. So the waiting time of P3 becomes 16 minus 3. The next one, P4. P4 gets the CPU at 23 milliseconds. But it comes on the system at the 4th millisecond. So its waiting time becomes 23 minus 4. P5 now, P5 gets the CPU according to the timeline over here, it gets the CPU at 31st millisecond but it comes on the system at the 5th millisecond. So its waiting time becomes 31 minus 5. So these are the waiting times of all the 5 jobs P0, sorry P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5 and divided by 5 that is the total number of jobs. This comes to 69 divided by 5 which comes to 13.8 milliseconds. That is the average waiting time of all the five jobs which have come to the system in the different arrival times. So for FCFS policy, in this 
case, the average waiting time is 13.8 milliseconds. Now we will see how do we calculate the average turnaround time. The average turnaround time is the turnaround time of all the jobs individually divided by the total number of jobs. So turnaround time of P1 plus that of P2, P3, P4, P5 divided by total number of jobs that is 5. Now when we talk about turnaround time as I have already told you, turnaround time is the total time that the job takes on the system. One is the total time required and one is the total time taken by that job on the system. That is what is the turnaround time. Now on the timeline if we see the value over here, suppose if, P, if I consider P1, this is the time when this job gets the CPU and this is the time when the job leaves the CPU. So basically this is the turnaround time of each and every job over here according to the timeline. But because these jobs are coming at different arrival times, so the turnaround time of each job will be the time when the job leaves the CPU minus the arrival time. So if I talk about P1, P1 leaves the CPU at 12th millisecond but its arrival time is 0. So the turnaround time of P1 will remain as 12 minus 1 that will be 0 of course. Now coming to P2, P2 leaves the CPU at the 16th millisecond but its arrival time is 1 millisecond. So the total turnaround time that is the total time it is there on, on the system is 16 minus 1 that will be 15. Coming to the next job that is P3. P3 leaves the CPU at the 23rd millisecond and its arrival time is 3 milliseconds. So the turnaround time will be 23 minus 3. The time it leaves the CPU minus the arrival time. Coming to the next one, P4. P4 leaves the CPU at the 31st millisecond. That means, does it mean that P4 was there on the system for 31 milliseconds? No. P4 came into the system at 4th millisecond. So from 4 to 31, it was there on the system. So 31 minus 4 is the turnaround time of P4. Next one that is P5. P5 leaves the CPU at the 34th millisecond but its arrival time is 5 milliseconds. So the turnaround time of P5 becomes 34 minus 5. That is the turnaround time of P5. Divided by the total number of jobs that is 5. This comes to 12 plus 15 plus 20 and so on. A total of 103 divided by 5 which comes to 20.6 milliseconds. So this is the turnaround time of all the jobs on the system which is 20.6 in case of first come first serve scheduling policy. Now when we see the remaining scheduling policy, uh, policies we will be able to make a direct comparison of which one is better but as of now this was the average turnaround time and the average waiting time of all the jobs considering the first come first serve scheduling policy. Now the advantages of first come first serve policy, we find it not very simple as of now but when we see the remaining policies, we will see that this first come first serve scheduling policy is the simplest form of amongst all of them. It is very easy to implement and of course to use. The drawbacks is that since it's a non-primitive scheduling policies, once the CPU has been allocated to a particular job, it cannot be taken away. So there is a lot amount, large amount of waiting time for the remaining jobs which are at the end of the queue. Now since it's a first come first serve policy, even the short jobs, that means the jobs which have a very small amount of CPU time, they will have to wait for a long time if they are towards the end of the ready queue. The jobs which are at the front of the ready queue will take up the CPU first. So a small job which is having say a CPU time of say 2 milliseconds only, it has to wait for a job which is at the front of the queue and having a CPU time of say 15 milliseconds. So that is another drawback of the FCFS policy. The third is that this policy is not a very good policy as we consider the time sharing systems because in a time sharing systems it is important that every job on the system gets a fair amount of CPU time which is not possible in case of first come first serve as the jobs have small jobs have to wait for a long time and lastly it is not a very efficient 
algorithm. When we see the remaining algorithms, we'll be considering this statement as very much true that this is not a very efficient algorithm and the performance of the system is quite poor in case of first come first serve scheduling. So that's all for today. In my upcoming videos, we'll talk about the shortest job scheduling policies, the round robin scheduling policy and the shortest remaining time scheduling policies. Thank you.